there is an unreported conflict raging across Latin America. From Brazil to Uruguay, Paraguay and Argentina, vast swathes of forests are being destroyed and people are being forced from their land. Acá teníamos nosotros arroyos, plantaciones, árboles grandes, ahora se está destruyendo todo. Eu acho que nós índio caiuá, nós vamos ver tudo. Nossa raça vai terminar aqui. These problems have been caused by the controversial spread of soy production a large part of which is grown to feed factory farmed animals in Europe, and much of it genetically modified. In a groundbreaking investigation, this film reveals the true cost of growing soy in South America. In Paraguay alone, over 2.6 million hectares of land are used to grow soya, and the effect of this on local communities has been devastating. Ante, anteriormente vivíamos los indígenas de, del monte, de los, eh, de los, de todos los montes, los bichos, los frutas, esto, y ahora termina porque ya ve usted que acá ya nos rodea ya estancia. Y esa es una invasión de hambre de reforestar, ellos vienen a fundir las cosas naturales como a estos bosques. Este es el principal de arroyo que, que cruza aquí en nuestra comunidad. Este se llama Arroyo Sayú. Y acá lo que cuando venena ahí, vino todo, todo lo veneno cuando llueve. Y este está podrido, este agua, a través de estas plantaciones de soja. Most of the soya grown in Latin America is exported to Europe and Asia. Much of it is genetically modified and produced by the biotechnology multinational Monsanto. Contrary to the claims of companies that produce genetically modified crops, strong evidence now shows a massive increase in the use of pesticides with the planting of these crops. Hoy día, todos esos ríos, todas esas grandes fuentes de agua en lo que fueron estos bosques y que ahora son sojales están muertos, están envenenados principalmente por el uso intensivo de agrotóxicos. Al mismo tiempo, las comunidades indígenas que habitaban estas selvas milenariamente, principalmente el pueblo Mbuá, Guaraní, que es el pueblo que habita mayoritariamente esa zona de la selva atlántica, eh, fue desplazado. Getulio de Oliveira es un miembro de la Kiowa people. Então com com veneno acaba de estragar cada vez mais, cada vez mais forte veneno, cada vez mais dificuldade. Então isso nosso sofrimento aqui. E não tem como para gente também a mata também que protege o nosso solo também, né? Não tem mais mata, tem só e não tem aonde a água cada vez vai sumindo, né? Se não tem nada a criança passa mal. A criança sente fome, tem tempo que tempo de, de, de sem comida, né? E aonde o pai, a mãe, a gente vai na cidade procurar o recurso, ele fala, não, índia está procurando lixo para comer. Não é isso que nós pensamos, porque nós estamos procurando comida. E eles falam, aquele que tem, eles falam que nós estamos procurando um lixo ainda. Não é, talvez, como não tem espaço mesmo, nós não podemos fazer nada. Experts claim that the rapid spread of soya farming has given rise to a new breed of brutal and intimidatory tactics by the soy industry. Land is being transferred from indigenous peoples and small farmers to large landowners and agribusiness, reducing the availability of staple crops and taking away from local communities any control of growing their own food crops. Community groups estimate that 90,000 families in Paraguay are forced to move away from their ancestral lands every year to make way for soy plantations.
La pérdida de soberanía alimentaria es quizás el impacto más inmediato que se tiene sobre eh, la mayoría de las familias pobres que debieron salirse del campo y venir a las ciudades a las que nosotros los llamamos desplazados internos. Es la forma más horrible, digamos, sea la de las fumigaciones aéreas y con estos grandes tractores, digamos, cuando una comunidad se resiste a vender su tierra o cuando una familia, peor aún, se resiste a vender su tierra, todos sus alrededores son fumigados, ya sea con el glifosato, el Randap, o con este, el Paracuat. These chemicals are increasingly being linked to a host of health problems, including skin rashes, diarrhea, vomiting, genetic malformations, loss of sight, and even death. Se estima que son más aproximadamente unos 20 millones de litros de agrotóxicos potentes que son arrojados en la región oriental del país cada año, 20 millones de litros, con la consiguiente contaminación de todo lo que encuentre, la muerte de fauna y flora este, local, nativa, abejas, animales domésticos, cultivos de autoconsumo se ven afectados por el herbicida y todo esto va atentando contra la posibilidad de arraigo que pueda tener una familia en esas comunidades. Petrona Vilasboa knows the dangers of living close to soya farms all too well. In 2003, her son, Silvino Talavera, was sprayed with chemicals as he cycled back from the village. Después vino el doctor, ocho y media por ahí, y miraba a Silvino y le dije, señora, ¿qué pasó en su hijo? Su hijo está totalmente envenenado, su hijo totalmente tenía un tóxico altamente peligroso. Ahí yo ya invertía, metí mi cabeza y lloraba, lloraba, desesperada ahí. Y ya no podía caminar más, ¿verdad? Y grande es mi hijo. Y después, ¿qué pasó? Mi hijo está totalmente paralizado ya. Y a las tres ya Silvino ya murió ya, ya, ya. No podía. The Supreme Court in Paraguay sentenced the two farmers to two years in jail for the death of Silvino. But community workers say that they are unlikely to serve their sentence. Almost all of the soya grown in Latin America is controlled by a handful of multinational companies such as Monsanto, Bunge, ADM, and Cargill. Even as hunger and food insecurity rises, these companies are making ever-increasing profits with the sale of patented seeds, pesticides, and fertilizers. Much of the soy is sent to Europe, where it's used as a cheap and protein-rich animal feed in factory farms across the continent. Most consumers in Europe are unaware that the meat and dairy products that they eat are made from animals that have been fed on genetically engineered soya, or that this soya has been grown on deforested land that has displaced thousands of local communities. The widespread deforestation of Latin America to feed European farm animals has huge implications for climate change as well. Global meat and dairy production is now responsible for 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions, more than the entire transport sector. There is a solution, however, and it is much closer to home. Hanni von Beek is a farmer and the chairman of the Dutch Arable Farming Union in the Netherlands. Uh, op dit moment is it so that uh, the soya die uh, naar Europa wordt geïmporteerd die is zo goedkoop dat Europese boeren daar niet tegen kunnen concurreren. Dat komt omdat uh, die productie ten koste gaat van het milieu en van de mensen in Zuid-Amerika. Europe must stop its reliance on damaging soy. It must support farming in South America that produces food for its own people rather than for animals in Europe. European producers should also be encouraged to farm in a way that does not damage the environment and communities overseas. Als alternatief voor soja in veevoer zouden we in Europa heel goed echte veldbonen, granen, uh, lupine kunnen telen, um, ook grasklaven. Better food in farming is possible, but we need urgent political action to change the current system. At the moment, 
Factory farming of meat and dairy in Europe is not benefiting people or the environment. We need to stop factory farming our meat and dairy and use homegrown feeds and more extensive farming. The only way that this can be done is to completely overhaul the way the government supports agriculture in Europe, to shift subsidies away from factory farming and towards better quality farming.